So I'm gonna take the rear subframe back off so I can put the throttle body back on and most of the wiring is just easier to do with the rear shock unbolted and leaned back and the subframe just out of the way. So I'll give a quick rundown on the wiring. It wasn't very interesting, that's why I didn't film it, because it's just me fiddling with some wires for a little bit. But obviously we've got the ECU bolted to the side of the frame here. We've got the regulator slash rectifier right there. Um, this is a capacitor, which is in place of a battery on this bike, because the bike doesn't have a battery. All the injector wiring and the fuel pump wiring and obviously the fuel line. And then the lines run up and that's for the map switches and the kill switch, which I have like a replacement. Uh, billet piece here because when I was riding the bike one of the first times testing it I broke the kill switch so this is like a an all-in-one sort of a clutch perch clamp and uh, kill switch so that's gonna work pretty good I was sort of waiting for the engine to go back in before I put a lot of the stuff back on so now that that's back in I can put the uh, hand controls on the kickstand on I can put the radiators back on test fit the headlight I can put the air filter in the airbox, so obviously nothing gets into the uh, inlet of the engine now. So yeah, I'm going to fit a few of those things, uh, starting with the throttle and the uh, levers. Off camera, I disassembled the rear master cylinder and just uh, painted it satin black to match the frame. I think it came up pretty good. I bought this little billet clevis for it too, which is a bit better looking than the stock uh, piece. And obviously that's the wiring for the rear brake light. So I'll throw that back on now as well. Also painted the front master cylinder and got some foldable levers. They are adjustable um, for distance from the bar and I think the uh, I think the black master cylinder came out really good and I couldn't forget about the clutch perch as well. I also got a uh, billet throttle tube because one of the first times I went riding to test, the, test this thing out I dropped the bike and smashed the plastic throttle tube that was uh, part of the lock-on grip and had to ride around for the rest of the day with a grip that was basically smashed apart and a throttle that wasn't working very well so it's not that expensive, but it's a good investment because at least I'll know I won't break a throttle tube next time I go out. So I bought some aftermarket radiators because the ones that were on the bikes that I had were both just busted they were both uh, bent and twisted a pair of these were uh, 110 the only problem with aftermarket parts is they pretty much never fit they never actually bolt on there's always some modification required regardless of how much it says they bolt on so the only issue i'm having with these they do bolt to the frame but they don't work with the force radiator guards which means they are obviously like a different size to the stock radiator so these are actually like six to ten mil thicker than the stock radiator which is great for i guess cooling performance because the you know the thicker the core is the more water they can circulate and cool at the same time so but the only problem with that is obviously the force radiator guards don't quite fit so i'll see if i can See if I can show that. So they're supposed to touch that. That's supposed to touch those tabs, but it doesn't. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, you can see I've already marked it out on this tab here. I'm going to cut uh, in this way with the grinder, that way, that way, and then chuck a little slit on this line here, and then hopefully bend those tabs up a little bit more just so it can get a catch on the uh, the brace part of the force radiator guard. And then this half should also work once that's once those are bent up. So. We'll see how we go. Hopefully I don't wreck uh, some brand new radiators. I cut the slits in the tabs and bent them up effectively making them further back actually on the radiator. But that's not, we're not quite out of the woods yet. Um, so the front half of the radiator guard is not fitting that well at all, as you can see there's actually a bolt in that mount. So it's, it's where it's supposed to be on the radiator. And you can see it doesn't even line up with the hole. Obviously these radiators aren't made to fit force radiator guards, but the force radiator guards are made to fit with the plastics. So you'd think these would also line up with the plastics, but apparently not. And you can see it's just sitting crooked. So I don't know if I even need to chop these tabs off completely um, just to get that to sit more flat with the radiator and then try and figure out some way to fix the radiator to the brace half. The brace half fits great now, but 
once I cut those tabs off, it won't fit that good. And there won't be much uh, lateral support because the bolts for the radiator guards are supposed to go through those tabs. Keep cutting and grinding and see what I can do. So the radiator guards fit up well. What I did notice though is that these force radiator guards, sort of the mount there, kind of has a, a bit of a bend to it. And I'm sure that's for a reason. I'm sure the factory radiators, uh, this mount on the factory radiators had like a slight bend in it just to make them uh, face inwards, I guess, so the louvers were more effective. So maybe I'll put a, I'll put a similar bend on this um, bracket here to suit the force radiator guards. Then maybe the uh, radiator actually sit parallel with the radiator guard, because right now it's kind of sitting a bit back. I put a bend in that bracket and the radiator is sitting way nicer inside that radiator guard now. Uh, it's more parallel with the front of it and sitting sort of how it's supposed to be sitting, but now it's got a bit more wobble to it because before the radiator brace was actually pressed up against the side and that's what was holding that uh, the radiator firm, but now it's loose. So I'm gonna have to come up with a solution. I'm gonna have to figure out a way to fix this to the actual radiator guard. Those tabs that I cut off are supposed to be bolted between these two points here, but they weren't ever gonna line up because obviously it's a cheaper aftermarket radiator. So what I might possibly do is drill two holes in the radiator brace here, or maybe just one, and also drill a hole in the outer bar of the radiator here, because as you can see, this outer plate doesn't actually have coolant flowing through it. This is just part of the structure. The coolant flows through those inner ones there. So what I can do is drill a hole in this and then possibly put a riv nut or a nut cert, whatever you want to call it, in this plate and then put a bolt through the radiator brace into the riv nut and that would hold the radiator still. Hopefully the riv nut's not too like deep that it's going to interfere with this uh, first, I guess you could say, uh, coolant channel. Um, obviously I'm going to, the riv nut will intrude in some of these fins here, but that's not going to matter too much because the radiator is thicker, so we're, we're getting more cooling efficiency any, anyway. The rib knot seems to have done the trick. There's no movement between the radiator and the radiator guard anymore. Nice and solid. And thankfully I didn't drill a hole in my radiator by accident. Made a fair bit of progress this afternoon. Obviously got all the hand controls on, built a throttle tube and new ODI grips. Got some CNC foldable levers, anodized black reservoir cap. I need to shorten this uh, kill switch wire, it's a bit long. The clutch cable's in, clutch perch and clutch lever are in. There's a look at that um, clutch perch kill switch that I got. Uh, the radiators are back on with their radiator guards. All the wiring is connected to where it's supposed to be. Got a trail tech kickstand. This spring was super hard to get on, but it's on now and it works. So that thing's going to be great instead of having to find a tree to lean it up against when I'm out riding. I have a few other things to go on, but I'm sort of running out of good lighting tonight. I have a uh, bar pad, a headlight, a uh, air filter that can go in. I have a tail light, but I don't have the plastics yet. Obviously things I need to buy like tank and wheels. That's major things. A lot of small things I still need to buy like uh, shifters and foot pegs and kickstarters and all that stuff. Mm -hmm.